my name is uh, Sam Moy. This is my electrical engineering senior project, Kilohertz. And uh, Kilohertz is a mobile platform that I've developed this semester. And uh, it's made to have many different attachments. Some of the attachments I've made, uh, paintball gun, flamethrower, <laughs> stuff like that. Um, next year, lawnmower, really who knows what, what I can what I'm gonna make. I don't really know myself. The base for uh, kilohertz right here is an electric wheelchair bog. It was donated to me from my fiance's mother's workplace. It's a picture of Chad and myself the first day we got it. And uh, we're just dismantling it and trying to figure out how it works. The original plan was to mimic an inductive joystick. Uh, of, that was what controlled the wheelchair before I modified it. An inductive joystick is similar to a regular joystick, except for it uses a center coil and four outer coils. And each one of those inductors is picked up by the microprocessor and is turned into signals that you can understand. Uh, I tried to replicate how it works, and it was really just too complicated. In this picture, you can see the, the inductors there. Um, Looked up four, four power supplies to it, um, two different oscilloscopes, and I really couldn't make much headway. It's kind of proprietary and hard to uh, work with. I wanted to use the system because it had a lot of nice features built into the speed controller. It had a uh, full assist feature and an automatic braking system. If you stopped powering the robot, it would stop on its own. Right now, if it was on a hill, it would just slide on down the hill. Here's a, a drawing that I drew uh, showing, it's kind of hard to see if my laser's dying, but that's the inductor, here's the four outer inductors, and a propeller, uh, propeller and four different D to A's. I was going to use that to control the, the uh, inductors. Here's a diagram, you can't really see it. Uh, that's how I was going to map the signals out. And it didn't really work. So. After the problems with that wheelchair, I just took it off and I went and purchased, or actually I was given a uh, Sabertooth speed controller. The Sabertooth speed controller is a DC speed controller. And it's capable of powering two different DC motors, two different channels from A to B. RC speed, or RC uh, helicopter controller, and uh, two channels from that. So here's a picture of what it looks like. The motors go in, the batteries go in, and two different motors come out, and that's the receiver I originally had first. Here's a picture of how I had it wired up. Here's some fuses. That's the box that's right pictured there. And this is the breakout box. I have 24 volts going into my breakout box, and then out of that going to my different things that I've made. But I was testing it one day and it went up in smoke. It found out it could only handle, uh, the speed controller can only handle 25 amps. And I was pulling over that. And I was calculated, it was about 20 to 25. I guess I was a little wrong. Um, so, it burnt up a power MOSFET, as you can see here, so it's pretty much completely useless now. So I needed a new speed controller, and this one worked so well until I burnt it up, I decided that I'll just get a more bigger, more powerful one. And this is the, uh, this is the Sabertooth 2 times 25, and that stands for 2, stands for how many channels you can control, and the number behind that is how many amps you can control. This one can control 25, this one can control 60. Now it can go up to 120 peak if you were to slam it one way and then slam it the back way. Put it forward and reverse. Um, I made a new enclosure for as you can see here. Uh, another issue that I was worried about this, since it's a much more powerful speed controller, I added a fan here. You really can't see on this projector that there's a 24 volt fan here. And it had a lot of extra uh, fuses to it so that wouldn't happen again. I actually put a really, really small fuse in there, 30 amps. And it still hasn't blown that. Actually, it blew it one time. So it's actually, right, it was just 
right be below 25 to 30 amps. It's kind of upsetting. Now I have something I really don't need. It's way too powerful, but it works pretty good. Here's a picture of how it's mounted on Kilohertz right now. It's that gray box, if you guys can see it. It's got an emergency stop on top of it. So here's a, next is a short video of some testing indoors and out. You can see it, it rotates really quickly. It's actually faster than the old uh, robot went. The old robot went about four and a half miles an hour. I'm estimating he goes six. And it, it works straight forward and backwards. Actually, when you slam it in reverse, from going forward to working great, it actually uh, charges the batteries. Here, it's not that fast, so yeah, don't worry. Uh, I just kind of sped up the video. This is a range test. That was about a quarter of a mile. It may not look like it, but it actually was. And as you can see from the marks here, I drove it all around that whole day, and it works great outside. Small hill, kind of drove it down. The grass is about you know, four to six inches. And uh, it works great out in that. Here's some outdoor testing right now. I'm just driving it around, see how it works. Okay, the next thing is I designed Kilohertz from the beginning to have different attachments. Here's a drawing that Brandon Tolley drew for me, Kilohertz frame. Now these four uprights right here, uh, I installed and bolted on that I can have additional attachments. As you can see here, here's another picture that he drew. We designed this and actually uh, started just going from there. And uh, I didn't know how to weld, and I tried to get some help from other students, and it kind of fell through. So uh, myself and Jim Irving actually welded this up ourselves. And uh, there's a picture of us welding. That's the first time we ever welded, and it's still on there, so I guess it works. We hit it with a hammer pretty hard, and it's still there. Um, here's a shot of welding. It doesn't look good, though. It's pretty bad, but it, it does the job. And that's what it looks like right now. Uh, just the uh, this part right here. And I cut four holes in this piece of plate, so it will slide on down there. And if I wanted to build a, a the next thing I want to build is a shelf put over top of that. That'll work exactly the same way, except for it's going to cover all the wheels and all the other objects on it. And uh, here's a, the next problem was actually making the, the paintball gun move up, down, left and right, making it shoot. And uh, here's a little sketch. I guess I was drawing probably in uh, Dr. Riggins' class. Uh, I originally wanted to just put a servo on here to lift the gun up and down. And it's in kind of a winch here. And that really, I, I try to, I'm not going to bore you with a whole bunch of extra pictures and stuff. I have a lot of stuff I've done, but uh, it, uh, it didn't really work. But here is what it looks like right now. Right now I'm using a servo with a steering mechanism from a truck. And that moves it left and right. It looks a lot better than that right now. This is probably the second prototype I made. And uh, this is differential equations class, <laughs> actually. Uh, and uh, I kind of came up with a new idea. I wanted, to, I wanted to have a linear actuator, but they cost so much, I really couldn't afford one. So what I did was I turned the rotational energy of the servo into a linear motion to move the gun up and down. And you can't really see, but that's how it works right there. And then the servo on the side here moves left and right. It doesn't have any power to it, so it moves freely. And, okay, here you can see it. See, there's an arm attached here, and the arm will move up and down. I had a piece of, uh, actually, it's uh, underwear elastic uh, on there, and it kind of worked to, to bring the gun back down, but uh, I've changed it a little bit since then, and it works a lot better without it. And the gun is a, uh, the marker is a Spider VS3. It's capable of shooting uh, 25 volts per second. And uh, we'll, we'll have a demo of that later. Here's a short video of it working. Right now, you can hear the click of noise. That is the relay power, the, the solenoid power. 
There's no air in the gun right now. Two, one. And it shoots 25 balls per second. <laughs> now, inside, I have these things. They're reusable paintballs. They're foam, they're safe to shoot inside, they don't damage the walls, they don't damage the surfaces and anything. Here's a slow mo. If you can see that right there, this is one quarter speed. So you can see how fast those things are going. They're going over 300 feet per second. You can see it bouncing right here. <laughs> they bounce a lot, so I don't want to really shoot it. Over two I'm aiming for his eye right now, so you can see how accurate it is. Really precise movements. Right here, I'm going to shoot nine balls at full speed. You can see exactly how fast that is. <coughs> and uh, here's my next thing. Since I built that, I want to build something else. I just have a tendency to keep building and building and building. <laughs> I've built this, I started it, I guess, middle of February. I've done all this since then. And uh, here's another, I think this is, uh, I don't know if this is Dr. Riggins or Dr. Mursky. That's some kind of calculus going on there. Um, the idea came from a, uh, a video I saw on the internet. It was a, a caulk gun uh, that you pull for the bathroom. Still there. And uh, we refined the idea a little bit with Chad's help to pull, have a servo pull this depressor right here, and that would let butane come out. And then I wanted to ignite that somehow. I didn't know if I wanted to use flames or sparks, as you can see. And big letters right here, big flames, comes out on the other side. Um, so here's a picture of the first prototype I made. Uh, the servo has a wire that I made. I soldered a wire together. It pulls this. It's kind of like a spring, so it always goes, wants to go forward. So whenever I pull it back, it'll let the butane compress, butane liquid come out. And then there's a lighter that I had taped on there. This didn't really work that well. You couldn't do it remotely. You couldn't ignite it remotely. So I worked and I tried to devise different ways of doing it. And I eventually built a electronic relay that turns on a electronic sparker from a gas grill. And there are sparks shoot between this right here. Butane comes out and it sparks and ignites. And it's about a four to six foot flame depending on how much gas is in the tank. Here you can see a, uh, it's kind of dark, that's a spark right there. Here's a short video of it working. Right there is a piece of snow. It snowed the other day, so I had to melt some snow. <laughs> this is all remote control, up to two miles away. servos, so hopefully I'll have a computer controlled kilohertz here in the near future. So I've done this in three months. Let's see what it's going to look like in a year. Any questions? You, you didn't say anything about um, how you put a camera on it. You have to watch, oh, yeah. just watch it. There's Come also on. a camera. I didn't want to make my presentation too long, so I cut it out. Um, but uh, I'm using my phone and I'm turning it into an I IP camera uh, that I can look at over the internet. And I can put my phone right in here, this little mount I made, and it can move 360 degrees. It can go up and down. So I, I actually plan on taking this to some paintball games uh, sometime in the future. They have these big thousand person games uh, and actually 
compete with us, not compete with it, but shoot other people, kind of. <laughs> the easy way to say. And I, I tried to, I had to have a way to get remote control. And uh, I guess I'll show you guys how it works outside. If you want to see it move, I can show you that right now. And I guess you saw it move a little bit earlier. But it's, uh, it's pretty quick. And the controls, I'll, I'll show you how, how it works right here. I'll shoot Dr. Higgins' computer. <laughs> I had a laser on it, but uh, we had to use a laser for the presentation, so I took it off. So the left and right movement is used with this joystick here. It's really smooth, just a little bit of movement. It resets itself. And then I'll have to turn around and show you guys this way. You see the uh, there's a servo mounted here, and whenever I move, joystick up, it turns it into linear motion. Now I had to remodel this, I don't know, this is probably the hardest part of the whole build. Getting it to move and everything wasn't that bad, but I felt that I wanted to show, you, you guys know that electrical engineers you can do wiring and stuff like that, but we're not really as good on the mechanical side, so I wanted to go out of my own way and build something mechanical that could show that I can do more than just one thing, I guess. So I tried to do Electrical and mechanical. A little bit of software, probably too. Okay. And uh, I recently got a remote line from my CO2 tank so I can detach it whenever I need to. Provided you turn it on. Hmm? Provided you turn it on. You can't take it. <laughs> um, the problem that I'm having right now is I only have seven channels with my receiver. And you might say seven channels, that seems like that's a lot, but it's not really. Because I got two to control the motors, one for each one. One to control up and up and down movement, one to control left and right, and one for the trigger. Oh, I can actually, you guys can hear the trigger without any air in it. So here's the servo mounted on the on the side. This is pretty much just rigged up to pull the trigger whenever I want to. So Every one of those clicks is a paintball firing. That's the solenoid. It's actually, way with how this comes back, it pushes that. So it'll depress whenever it wants to. And uh, that was actually, it wasn't too bad. I've actually, this is the second paintball gun I made. I built another one, and I wanted one that shot faster, so I got this one. Any other questions? Where have you demoed it? Uh, I've gone to Kimball Elementary. And I've also gone to Athens Elementary and showed this to, to the elementary school kids there to try to encourage them to stay in school. And um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't have a flamethrower or the paintball gun on there because schools have a tendency to get a little anxious. <laughs> I'm glad that our, our school's so great and has let me build this this year. Would you be willing to show it a few more times and set something up? Yeah, yeah we're going to do it right now. As soon as this is over. I mean, two other schools. Yeah, we have, we have another school uh, scheduled. Uh, when? I don't know when. Uh, we were going to get another school scheduled. And then my old high school in Covington, Virginia, uh, my technology professor wants me to come and show this to, I think, about 100 or so of his students. Okay, you guys ready? Three, two, one. Imagine if those were real bullets. Oh, yeah. We'll tell you when a car comes. Just raise it. Is that it? No! That has to be the fun. Oh, I love it. That's a nice flint that we Yeah, I'll do it. You know, look at the ground. Can you see the heat? 